Your dentist or your dental hygienist has recommended that you use a water pick or similar device for irrigating the gums at home. This video is intended to teach you the correct technique so that you can get the most value and effectiveness out of using this for your oral care. This is an extremely valuable tool, but only when used correctly and with proper attention and focus. Please use this video as your instruction guide and not the written instruction guide that comes with your machine. A little background first. One of the underlying factors in your gum tissue health is the presence of a bacterial plaque in areas that are hard to reach with brushing or flossing alone. Let's look a little closer at this so you can better understand the why of using a water pick. Here we're taking a sample of plaque from just under the gum line to go onto a microscope slide. Plaque is a biofilm containing a wide variety of bacteria and the delicate lining of the gum tissue is sensitive to the bacterial toxins that are produced. When this biofilm stays in contact with the gums, particularly just under the gum line, this creates a true bacterial infection. When we look at this plaque under a microscope, we can see a profile of what types of bacteria are in your plaque. A normal plaque sample will look something like this under the microscope. You're seeing a couple of white blood cells surrounded by various bacteria, which left undisturbed can lead to further inflammation and a breakdown of the tissue and deepening of the periodontal pocket. Here, a calibrated probe is measuring a normal gum pocket of about two to three millimeters. The diagram shows the probe in place, and now this depicts a pocket that's gotten deeper, like four to five millimeters, due to bacterial infection. Normal brushing and flossing is not going to reach the depth of this pocket, so the plaque remains undisturbed and free to do its damage. The profile of microorganisms in an infected pocket often looks dramatically different. This shows a very active bacterial infection. The thin corkscrew wiggly bacteria in this sample are called spirochetes. Spirochetes don't belong in a healthy mouth at all. When we see this many spirochetes in a sample, it indicates a pretty serious infection. This infection may be present with no significant symptoms that the patient notices, other than maybe the gums bleed a little bit once in a while. Research shows that this level of infection can also have significant effects on your general health. Here from the same patient sample are a couple of amoeba, single-celled parasitic organisms that definitely do not belong in the mouth. We'll see this sometimes in more serious infections and sometimes when a patient has a history of some travel in third world countries where this may have been picked up. When we see this in dental plaque, it's likely that there's also an imbalance in the gut which should be addressed. All of this will respond well to proper treatment and home irrigation. The gums will stay healthy when this bacterial film is disrupted and removed daily. That's why we brush and floss, although as we've said, this alone may not be enough. But they are important, so let's review that a little bit first. There are other factors that are also important, such as diet, lifestyle, body chemistry, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Effective brushing uses a soft bristle brush, angling the bristles at about 45 degree angles towards the gums, and gently using little circular strokes like it's shown here. Work your way around the arch, all through the outside, and on, also coming back on the inside. You should feel the bristles on the gums as well as the teeth at the same time. In front, use the end of the brush where space is more restricted. And don't forget brushing the tops of the teeth as well. This is the most effective way to let the bristles sweep slightly under the gum line to disrupt the soft bacterial plaque. Brushing like this will take about two minutes to get through the whole mouth. For demonstration, we're showing without toothpaste. Whatever toothpaste you prefer, just use a small pea-sized drop on your brush. Still, this doesn't reach very effectively between the teeth, which is why flossing is important. So let's take a look at that for a minute. Start with a good length of floss, wrap it around your middle fingers, leaving a short segment that you can control with your thumb and first fingers. Stretch it tightly enough so when you bring it through the contact point between the teeth, it doesn't snap onto the gums and injure them. Once it's through that contact point, you can relax the tension, wrap it around the surface of the tooth, and slide it up and down to clean the tooth surface and under the gum line. 
bring it up a little, wrap it around the adjacent tooth, do the same thing. Then pop it off, move it on to the next contact point, continue around the mouth. Every so often, take an extra wind around your middle finger, bringing a fresh segment of floss to use. This is the effective way to floss. So if you're brushing and flossing this effectively, why do you need a water pick? Many people like you already have deeper pockets or contours around crowns or bridges or implants that make it impossible to reach all of the plaque with just brushing or flossing. As we've said, if the pocket depths are greater than two or three millimeters, the floss or brush can't reach the depth of the pocket and the plaque will continue to thrive there. The pulsating jet of water from a home irrigator can reach these areas more effectively than anything else. Just as with brushing or flossing, the correct technique makes all the difference. If you're serious about caring for your gums, then it is crucial that you learn this skill of effectively removing bacterial plaque. Home irrigation is a skill that takes a little time to master, but it's well worth the effort. This is a water pick Aquarius model. As of the making of this video, this is the model we recommend in our office. There are other devices that also work well, such as Hydrofloss and Viajet. The important thing is to use the correct tip and the correct technique and to take the time to do it right. With a water pick, the tip you will use is the pickpocket tip. All of the other tips that come with the unit can just be set aside. None of them will have the same effect as the pickpocket tip. If you're using a Viajet or Hydrofloss, use the tip that's most like this pickpocket tip. It's narrow, tapered, a little soft and flexible. Some of the other tips might be fine for blasting food particles out of braces, but for treating periodontal disease, you need to use only this tip. The idea is that the pulsating jet of water flushes under the gum line like a mini power washer and flushes out the bacterial film. By using an antimicrobial ingredient in the water tank, you also increase the effectiveness of the technique. It'll leave behind a little antimicrobial activity after you're done irrigating. It's important to realize that you have to dislodge this biofilm mechanically. Just rinsing with a mouthwash or antibacterial rinse won't really penetrate this biofilm. Go ahead and take the tank off of the unit and fill it up with some warm mouth temperature water. Fill it all the way to the top. Then go ahead and add the antimicrobial ingredient that you have been recommended. Here we're showing a product called Tooth Tonic Plus, which is a combination of essential oils and herbal extracts that's very effective and non-toxic. Some other products that are effective are Under the Gum Tonic, Golden Seal Tincture, Grapefruit Seed Extract, and even Baking Soda. Please stick with what your dentist or dental hygienist has recommended for you. It's known to be effective and safe. By checking repeated plaque samples under the microscope, it's easy for us to tell when the home technique is working. If you're using this model, set it to floss rather than massage, and set the power setting pretty low. Usually it's going to be around a 2 or a 3 with this pickpocket tip. You'll need to develop your own sort of sense of feel, but you don't want it so strong that it's going to have a stinging sensation on the gums. The goal is not to reach the highest setting you can, just to reach a setting that effectively gets under the gum line. So now we'll begin, and it's important that you go slowly. A hurried up job will not be effective at all and will give you a false sense of security. Doing this correctly will take about five minutes to get through the whole mouth. We're going to demo on a model first without the water on. And like with a toothbrush, you're going to angle it the tip about 45 degree angle towards the gums and tracing it very slowly along the gum line. Yes, you do need to go this slowly. You'll take about two or three seconds on each tooth, maybe go back and forth one or two times. In between the teeth, you can flatten the tip out more like 90 degrees and shoot the water jet between the teeth. And here you see it again on the model, very slowly along the gum line, pausing between the teeth and shooting the water jet through, creating kind of a vortex that dislodges the bacterial film between the teeth. This demonstration is going a little too fast, but we want to give you the sense that you need to develop a feel of methodically power washing each tooth, one tooth at a time. 
Begin at one corner of the mouth, continue around the whole arch, and then you're going to repeat on the inside or the tongue side of the teeth also. You have to develop kind of a sense of feel where you are because you won't be able to see very well with a water jet. It'll help at first maybe to practice with the water off so you can sense where you have to place the tip and how you have to hold your hand for each tooth surface. As your dentist or dental hygienist probably told you, bacterial infection in the mouth can be a significant risk factor for many systemic health problems such as heart disease, ulcers, diabetes, stroke, premature births, many others. Effectively maintaining your gum health is not limited to just dental benefits. You're helping to maintain your overall health. They can't really be separated. So it'll be a little messy at first until you practice it more. You'll do it over a sink and let the water dribble down. As you get the hang of where the tip positioning should be, you can close your lips around the tip and it'll be less splashing. When you're finished, empty out any remaining liquid in the tank, rinse out the tank with water, and run some clear water through the tubing for a few seconds. This will flush out any residue of product that might clog up or degrade the tubing over time. If you're using baking soda, it's best to mix the baking soda in a separate container first. Dissolve a tablespoon or two in warm water, mix and dissolve it really well, then pour it in the tank before use. Afterwards, rinse the tank, flush the lines to prevent any residue from drying or clogging the lines. You'll probably find that one tank will get you through a whole mouth session. If you finish your session and still have like half a tank left, you're probably going way too fast. Time yourself a few times to get the sense of how long is five minutes. If you get through a tank and you're not all the way through with the mouth, you might be going a little too slow, or more likely, you have the power setting up too high. If you're using a tip other than the pickpocket tip, the opening is too broad to be effective and you'll go through a tank way too quickly. Okay, so now you know how. It's up to you to do this daily to effectively control gum infection and allow your gums to heal. What's the best time to do it? Really, that depends on your schedule. Do it at a time when you can devote a full five minutes to the technique. In the evening is probably most ideal, but if you find you're tired in the evening and can't get yourself to add one more thing to your routine, then do it in the morning or wherever it'll fit into your regular routine. It's really important to do this when you can take the time to do it with focus and with enough time to make it effective. You're likely to feel a noticeable difference early on when you start doing this regularly. We'll definitely see a difference at your next checkup. Congratulations, you're now empowered to be in more control of your oral health.